What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, Bad Dog, back with another New York Giants video. And before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, just want to remind everybody tonight about 10 15, 10 20 Eastern Standard Time, myself and the Entertainer Talk and Sports will be live on this channel, Talking Giants. So make sure you guys tune in for that. The New York Giants kicked off their training camp today. They get in the pads tomorrow. Chris and I got a lot to go over tonight as we kick off the 2019 New York Giants football season. And, of course, we'll be taking all your questions from the chat. So please make sure you guys tune in for that. I'm really excited to start this 2019 season. I know you guys are too, so make sure you join us for that. Before I get into comparing Daniel Jones and Sam Darnold and why Daniel Jones is going to be so much better, let me just say this real quick. I've had a lot of Eagle fans and Cowboys fans on my page the last couple weeks talking trash, and I get that. I respect that. Hey, I'm a trash talker at heart. I, I, I appreciate that. I really do. And let's face it, Giants fans, we haven't really been good in the last two years. We haven't beaten the Eagles or the Cowboys since 2016. So <laughs> I understand the trash talk from those two fan bases. I get it. They're our division rival. Completely get it. But Jets fans, <laughs> Jets fans are going to come to my page and talk trash. The Jets, they're going to be in my live stream talking trash. Jets fans. The Jets have been relevant twice since 1968, okay? The first time was with that man right there. Broadway Joe, Joe Willie Namath from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, led the New York Jets to an improbable victory over the heavily favored Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl III when back then it was called the AFL-NFL Championship game because the leagues haven't merged. That was the first time the New York Jets were relevant. 1968 was a long time ago. And they'd only been relevant one other time since. And it's because that same man, Broadway Joe, Joe Willie Namath, legendarily drunk on Sunday Night Football, told Susie Colbert, I want to kiss you. Drunk as hell. That was the only other time the New York Jets have been irrelevant. Sam Darnold will never be as good as Daniel Jones. He just won't. Last year, Sam Darnold was terrible. 17 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. His completion percentage was just under 58%. They were 4-9 with him as a starter. He missed three games due to injury, and he had a 77.6 quarterback rating. That's terrible. Now, I know... Todd Bowles was his coach last year, and Todd Bowles isn't a good coach. He had to learn a whole new system. He had to get acclimated to NFL speed, and now he's got to come in and learn this nuts whole new system. If you were a freaking fan of a football team, would you want this guy as your head coach? Adam Gase, a guy who failed in Miami, a guy who failed to make Ronnie Tannehill any sort of superstar quarterback? <laughs> that right there is Sam Darnold's head coach for the foreseeable future. And I'm going to say this. Gase probably won't get through three years with the Jets. I'll be surprised. Sam Darnold has no offensive line whatsoever over there with the Jets. The Jets had a lot of cap space. They spent it on Le'Veon Bell. Fantastic. Le'Veon Bell was a top running back in this league. Of course, he's had a year off, and he could run differently behind Pittsburgh's offensive line, which was actually good, and he could be patient like he is and open up holes, and he could go through the hole. The Jets don't have that, so Le'Veon Bell will not be as successful with the Jets as he was with Pittsburgh. I mean, anybody's going to know that, so that really doesn't help Sam Darnold whatsoever, and of course, the receivers aren't very good either. So the Jets took all their money, they gave it to Le'Veon Bell, and they gave it to the defense, but they refused to protect their investment in Sam Darnold, who they took third overall in the draft. And uh, Sam Darnold going to be just like another Mark Sanchez, a high-end draft pick that the Jets fans are all excited about, and he ends up being absolutely nothing. Sam Darnold is not going to succeed with Adam Gase as his head coach, and then, like I said, when Gase is gone in a couple years, because he will be, these have to learn a whole new system. They're the Jets, man. The Jets. The Jets play in our stadium. This is going to be Daniel Jones' stadium. Take a look at what the Giants are doing. They've already started to build that offensive line. they got the best running back in the league behind them. They've locked up two solid receivers for four years, and they have a good young core of receivers there. And going into the next season when Daniel Jones becomes our starter in 2020, we have almost $80 million in cap space to draft with and to sign free agents. We can build our offensive line through the draft or through free agency, and we can sign a home run hitting wide receiver if we choose to go that route. They are building correctly around Daniel Jones. They have not built correctly around Sam Darnold. And Sam Darnold, I don't like him out of USC. I said that all the time. I'll even go as far as to say this. Every quarterback in that draft class last year, none of them will be as good as Daniel Jones. None of the ones we had a chance to get. Everybody said that the Giants should have drafted Sam Darnold. Why? Sam Darnold was 4-9. and nine. With the Jets. The Jets were worse than the Giants last year. How would Sam Darnold have ever helped this team? He would have, he would have sat behind Eli Manning. At least he wouldn't have got hurt last year. 
<laughs> Sam Darnold is set up for failure with the Jets, as most of their quarterbacks are, just like Mark Sanchez. Well, you can say they went to the AFC Championship game back-to-back years. That's because of their defense. That oh, had nothing to do with Mark Sanchez, who's now retired. That's how bad Sanchez is. Sanchez never caught on anyway. You can expect the same kind of path for Sam Darnold. They both went to USC. They're both the same type of quarterback. Now, Jets fans can say, well, Sam Darnold played well the last two games of the season. Pfft, who cares? He's got a whole new system to learn. And like I said, there's no offensive line there. Daniel Jones is going to have a house built around him. And like I said, a running back that actually can produce to alleviate the pass rush. Sam Darnold ain't going to have that. As good as Le'Veon Bell is, their offensive line is terrible. And they should have built their offensive line and not worried about Le'Veon Bell. And that's, that's what they should have done. But that's just me. Well, Sam Darnold isn't going to succeed. If I'm going to sit here and tell you that Daniel Jones is going to be better than Dak Prescott, you're damn right I'm going to say he's going to be better than Sam Darnold. And that's for sure because, hey, Sam Darnold ain't a good quarterback. Now he's never going to be a good quarterback. And it's going to be the way it's been forever. The Jets play in our stadium. The Jets are irrelevant. It'll be Daniel Jones and New York Giants on the front page of New York Post. And it'll be Sam Darnold and the Jets on the back page of New York Post for their whole careers. That's what it's going to be. Now, regardless of what happens, I'm a man. I can take constructive criticism. And if I'm wrong, I'll stand there and take my medicine. But I'm not wrong about this. Daniel Jones will be better than Sam Darnold. Mark my words. It's just how it is, Jets fans. So like I said, tonight, make sure you tune in for myself and the entertainer talking sports, talking Giants, and I am gone. Peace!